Hey guys, welcome back for another spooky Sunday. At this point in filming, I'm actually before Halloween, but by the time you guys will see this, it's actually after Halloween. So I hope that you guys had an awesome time trick-or-treating, and I hope that you've had a lot more treats than you did tricks. Oh, that's weird. Hang on, let me just, let me go answer that. Trick or treat! No, I, I, guys, Halloween is on Saturday. It's, it's Wednesday right now. No, I don't have any candy for you. Why would I have candy for you? It's not Halloween yet. What, what are you doing? What is that? Oh, no, oh, come on, guys. Ugh. All right, sure. Okay, so, uh, I've just been tricked. And that's kind of the fun of trick-or-treating, right? You know, the tradition actually says that if you don't provide somebody a treat, then they have the right to trick you. Oh, well. In any case, I have a video from you, a uh, video for you, um, about a time when somebody tried to trick Jesus. So I will see you in a second. Jesus was a great teacher. Folks would come from miles around to hear his thoughts and ideas. Ooh. Many people loved Jesus and listened to everything he said. What a great teacher, man! Jesus rocks! Let's get the t-shirt. But there were some who did not. They were the Pharisees, <laughs> the Sadducees, <laughs> and the teachers of the law. Jesus? Oh, please us. Where's his fancy teaching stick and funny hat? This guy's a teacher. He looks more like a kitchen cabinet maker. Come on. Actually, he's a very excellent carpenter. He did my whole dining room in uh, Birchwood, or Gopherwood. I needed work on the outside, but Jesus came and did the work on the inside, too. I'm a changed hand. Even though they knuckled down every day to study the teachings of Moses, they had no love in their hearts. One day, Jesus was teaching in the temple. The Pharisees wanted to make him look silly. So they asked Jesus a very, 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 very difficult question. <laughs> and Jesus, out of all of the commandments of Moses, which is the most important? Hmm? Listen, everyone. The most important commandment has never changed. Huh? The Lord your God is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. Ooh. And love and care for other people in the same way you love and care for yourself. Wow. Big butter boom! He nailed it. Give him a hand. <laughs> love God, love other people. <laughs> This guy really has a grasp on love, I'll tell you. Hey, pull my finger. All right, so I almost got all of it. Oh. Fantastic. All right, so why don't you take a second on your whiteboards and maybe just draw something, either a trick that you've done or a trick that's been done to you. But try to illustrate or draw the scene that happened. Now, was it really funny? Was it really scary and embarrassing? But whatever it is, try to draw it out and then show it to me later. And if you're at home, draw a picture and then, or you can just explain it and then send it to me. All right, so we're talking about trick-or-treating today. And we're talking about the, the time when the Pharisees tried to trick Jesus. Obviously they didn't succeed, you watched the video. but. It may be kind of confusing of how that was a trick. So I'm gonna explain that in just a second. First, let's talk about what makes something a trick. 
What's the point of tricking? I took that can of spray paint from those kids. They're not gonna get me again. So, what is the point of tricking? The point of tricking is to embarrass somebody, right? You don't trick somebody because it's, you think they're gonna get angry, you trick them because you think it's funny. Right, you don't trick somebody out of evil, you trick them usually because you want to embarrass them. Now you can be mean like the Pharisees and you can try to embarrass Jesus and try to discredit who he is. But on the most part, if you're tricking somebody, you're pulling a prank or a trick, you're just trying to have fun. But it's always at the cost of somebody else's reputation. Because somebody just spray painted me, not spray painted me, what am I saying? Silly stringed me with this, and what that did was it made me look silly. It made me look silly on this video. That was at the cost of my reputation. Now, if somebody who didn't know me saw that, they'd be like, wow, that Kyle, he's a goof, right? That would be embarrassing. Tricks are always at the cost of somebody else. That's why it hurts sometimes when tricks go too far. The Pharisees here, they're trying to trick Jesus. They were trying to embarrass him. They were trying to make him look silly or like he doesn't know what he's talking about to everyone else in the room who believed in him. Because they didn't like Jesus and they didn't believe in him. So they didn't trick him by spraying him with silly string, putting a whoopee cushion under him or any of that stuff. They tried to trick him by asking him a very controversial question. Controversial just means that um, it's something that a lot of people argue about. Right? If I said, is a hot dog considered a sandwich? And half of the room said, yes, it's considered a sandwich. And the other half of the room said, no, it's not considered a sandwich. And they argued about it. That topic would be called controversial. By the way, a hot dog is definitely not a sandwich. So if you think it is, We'll talk after the video, because it's not a sandwich. Anyway, and a straw has two holes, but whatever, and water is, is wet. But that's a topic for another time, controversial topics aside. The Pharisees were trying to trick Jesus by asking him something that a lot of people had issues with. You see, there are 613 laws in the Bible. We know that. We talked about it last week. We talked about it some months ago. There are 613 laws. And the, Pharisee, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the keepers of the law, they were the ones who enforced it. They were the ones who taught it. They were the ones who memorized it. They're very intense about these laws. So for Jesus to have to pick out the best law is something that all of these groups of people have argued about for a long time. Because they ranked these laws the same way that we rank laws, right? We say that stealing a piece of gum from the corner store is a lot less severe than killing someone. We say that stealing a car is worse than lying to your mom. We say that, I don't know, cheating off of a test is not as serious as kidnapping your best friend. Kidnapping your best friend. I don't know, I couldn't think of anything. But anyway, we rank laws all the time, so did they. They said that all of the laws that God gave, there were some that were really intense and there were some that were not. There were some that you had to follow, which God was telling you to do something, and there were some in which God was saying, don't do something, and they were forbidden. There was a lot of different laws like that. And for countless years, they got together and they would argue that this law was better than this law, which, is, which was better than this law, and they would try to rank them. So for Jesus to give in to that question, to pick one of those 613 laws, meant that Jesus was opening up a conversation for people to argue with him, which would make it a lot harder for people to believe in him. That's why it was a trick. Because they wanted Jesus to say the wrong thing. They wanted Jesus to invite people to argue with him. And Jesus didn't allow that. What was his answer? His answer was simple. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Four things. And then he said, 
love your neighbor as yourself. All right, love God, love your neighbor. That's what he said. But why do you think that meant that he wasn't being tricked? Why do you think that that didn't work out for the Pharisees? Well, the answer is simple. For one, they didn't really want an answer. But for two, it is the greatest commandment. It is the greatest law simply because Jesus said, hey, if you love God with all of who you are and you love each other, that's taking all of the laws and the heart behind them and putting it into one. He's saying that everything that you have followed, all of these 613 laws are simple when you just choose to love God and love your neighbor. When you choose to put God first, you're not going to do those crazy things like kidnapping your friend or killing or lying or stealing or any of those things. Because you love God. You don't want to hurt him. When you love your neighbor, you're not going to do things to hurt your neighbor. So all of those laws were part of that one law. It was a very clever, it was a very wise answer. But it's strange because even though the Pharisees tried to trick Jesus, it seems that Jesus kind of gave us a treat. Because right here, this little confrontation, this little argument, this little failed trick between the Pharisees and Jesus was kind of a reflection of us. It's kind of a reflection, a picture of our relationship with God. You see, because most of the time we think that we have to earn God's love. We have to earn salvation. We have to earn our way into heaven. Oh man, if I do all of these good things, God is going to let me into heaven. And that's not true. Oh, if I follow all of these rules, if I sacrifice goats for my sins, I can get into heaven. And for the Jewish people, that's what the Jewish people believed, but that was not true. What Jesus was saying was that all that mattered was that we love God and love each other, which is not about earning, it's just not about works, it's about grace. And that's a treat for us because grace is something that we can't earn. Grace is something that we don't deserve. It's the ultimate treat. It's the ultimate gift. So, today when we talk about trick or treating, when we talk about people who demand a treat from us or else they trick us, it's kind of interesting that now we can look at something that happened thousands of years ago when Halloween wasn't a thing. When Jesus provided us with the ultimate treat by dying on the cross for our sins, by choosing to love us no matter what. All it takes is to love God and love each other. And there's no way to earn that. Anything else that somebody might try to tell you, that's just a trick. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it here, so I'm just going to pray. Father God, thank you so much that we don't have to do anything to earn our way into heaven. God, that you love us and that you will always love us, no matter what. God, thank you that you count all sins equal. God, that all of these laws, all of these rules that we need to follow, God, that they are all the same. But yet, the most important thing we can do, the only thing that really matters to you, is that we love you with everything that we have. And that we would offer that same love to everyone around us. God, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to help us do just that. God, that we would put you first. And that we would put everyone else first as well. God, that we would live to love you and to worship you and that we would live to serve the people around us. Thank you, God, that you're someone who constantly replaces sins for forgiveness and grace. You're someone who constantly replaces tricks for treats. Amen.
All right, guys, so before you leave, we're gonna play a very quick game about some of the weirder and more strange stories of the Bible. So all you have to do is figure out whether it's true or false. And then next week, we'll reveal the answers. If anyone has all of the answers right, they'll earn 20 kid bucks. Okay, here we go. So question number one, or I guess story number one. There is a man who is talking to a donkey. But it gets weirder. The donkey is talking back. Oh, <gasps> crazy. All right, so all you have to do is answer true or false, whether or not that man was actually talking to a donkey, if that is a real Bible story. All right, second story, you ready? God called Ezekiel to eat food cooked with human poop. Now, is that a true story or a false story? All right, story number three. Jesus, at some point, turned all of the water in the Sea of Galilee to blood. Now, is that a true story or a false story? Okay, number four. There was a woman on her way leaving a city. When she turned and looked around towards the city, she turned into a pillar of salt. She was one salty woman. Is that a true story or a false story? Last one, number five. Okay. Peter cut a man's ear off and then ate it. Now, is that true or false? Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. So again, just write these answers down. Tell me the story and whether you think it's true or false. And then next week, if you have all of them right, you'll get 20 kid bucks. All right, guys, so your challenge, read the story in Mark 12, memorize it. The entire conversation is only like a few verses between the Pharisees and Jesus, and then come back. The first kids to tell me those memorized scriptures next week are going to be able to silly string me with a bunch of silly string that I have in my office. All right, I will see you next week. Be safe out there. I hope you've had a great Halloween.